Three. Uh, g'day, I'm Dick Williams. I'm a fire ecologist with CSIRO Ecosystem Sciences in Darwin. And here we are at the Territory Wildlife Park, about 100k out of Darwin. And we're in the middle of a burning for biodiversity fire experiment. So we're standing in the middle of a one hectare plot. That's 100 metres by 100 metres. And we're just about to light it up. And we'll be lighting it up with an instrument called a drip torch, which contains flammable fuel. It's dispensed out the end here. And it'll be lit up around the edges, the edges of the plot. We're standing right in the middle. And what we're going to be doing is measuring aspects of fire behaviour. So the rate of spread, uh, the flame height, and other aspects of the way the fires behave. So we're interested in that because we want to know the seasonality of fire behaviour. At the moment, it's June, it's relatively early in the dry season, and the major fuel type, the grasses, are still relatively green. That means they're a bit moist, and so all other things being equal, the fires move a little bit more slowly. Uh, later on in the dry season, after we haven't had rain for, say, six months, the grass is a lot uh, more hayed off, it's drier, all other things being equal, the fires move quicker. Uh, we've been in here uh, prior to the fires, we've measured the fuel loads. Uh, the major fuel types are the fine grassy fuels, the leaf and twig litter that's come out of the canopy of the trees, and also the coarse woody fuels as well, the branches and trunks um, of trees that have either fallen over or branches that have fallen out. So we know a fair bit about the fuels. Uh, the experiment is designed to look at the difference uh, in response to different fire regimes. So by regime we mean variation at a point in the landscape in either fire frequency and therefore intervals between fires, fire intensity, basically how hot the fire is, how much oomph and woof it's got, um, and the timing of the fires as well, whether they're sort of relatively early or relatively late in the fire season. <coughs> you can also look at different fire types as well. Um, so a peat type fire, fires burning in peaty fuels, for example, up in the high country, behave very differently to fires burning in grass and litter fuels. Uh, the experiment here, we've got six different fire regime treatments. A treatment that we burn every year in the first week of June, such as this plot here. A treatment where we burn uh, every second year in the first week of June, so a biennial early treatment. Um, again, a triennial treatment where we burn every three years in the first week of June. And the fourth of our early treatments is burning every five years uh, in the first week of June. So that's holding season <coughs> constant and varying the uh, frequency uh, with which a plot is burnt, or the interval between individual fires. Uh, the last two regimes are burning every second year in the late dry season, in September, when it's much hotter and windier and the landscape is a lot drier, and of course an unburnt control. That is my radio cue. The type of fire that you get in vegetation is very much dependent on two key factors. The first key factor that you need to be aware of is the fuel load. So fuel is this stuff, the stuff that's combustible and can be burnt in a fire. Fire ecologists measure uh, fuel loads less than six millimetres in diameter as a really good way of estimating how much combustible material there is on the ground. So this is the sort of material that's going to carry a fire rapidly. The second key factor that you might think about as influencing the type of fire that you have at any one site is what's called the rate of spread. So when a fire is moving quickly, that tends to produce very high intensity fires because Fast moving, for, fast moving fires are releasing lots of energy. By contrast, slow back burning fires are moving very slowly. So you could just about walk over the fire line if they're moving that slowly. They're not very hot. So fuel loads and rate of spread are the key determinants of the type of fire that you get in any one place. Three. So what we have in front of us are examples of fine fuel, those materials less than six millimetres in diameter. They burn quickly because they're combustible. But it's also important to take account of coarse woody debris, so things like twigs and logs, because these are the things that are going to catch fire and, and burn for longer than the fine fuels. And this is really important because there's more carbon stored in these types of fuels, so this, when it burns, releases more carbon to the atmosphere. So it is important to know how much fine fuel we've got, that 
influences the type of fire we have, but the coarse woody debris uh, influences the residence time of any fire at one site and how much carbon and heat is released in small locations. So in addition to studying the behaviour of the fires, we're also primarily interested in the effect of the fires on the bush. So what does uh, variation in uh, regime do to plant life, to the grasses, to the trees, uh, to the animal life, to the, the invertebrates, to the vertebrates, um, and what does uh, variation in regime also mean for greenhouse gas uh, accounting as well? Because of course fires produce a range of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, nitrous oxide, um, but also vegetation draws carbon dioxide back down out of the atmosphere as it's growing, particularly during the wet season up here. Um, so we're interested in the uh, uh, amount of greenhouse gas that goes up and the amount of greenhouse gas that is drawn back down again. Uh, so some of the things that we are measuring are plant composition and structure, uh, composition and structure of invertebrate communities as well. Um, but a lot of trees that are tagged um, so that we can keep uh, tabs on individual uh, trees and their growth so that we can estimate incremental growth in the trees, mortality uh, and recruitment and keep uh, tabs on the, the dynamics uh, of the tree stratum. Uh, that tells us something about uh, biodiversity but it also tells us something about carbon uh, dynamics as well. So when this piece of bush burns plants are going to have to survive the fire one way or another. And so how would we understand the types of plant strategies that would allow them to persist? Well one of the really obvious ones is if you've got very thick bark that will protect you from the heat of that fire, the actual flames. And many eucalypts have such a strategy to survive fire. So here we've got what's called a Darwin woolly butt, Eucalyptus miniata. And you can see this, this tree has been burnt in the past, it's clearly been burnt in the past yet it's alive. But you'll notice the bark is thick and fibrous. Look how thick that is. I've just pulled off some outer bark that's at least 10 centimetres thick. You can see it there. That's protecting that tree from the effects of fire. So underneath the, this woolly bark out here is where the growing parts of the plant are. The cambium, the reed sprouting buds, the epicormic buds perhaps. And they're safe from the heat of the fire because this bark prevents them from actually being exposed to heat. Sweet, John. Just to give me a rough idea, uh, went swung round again, actually. It's not doing much. <laughs> Here we have an example of what's called smouldering combustion and instead of, and this differs from the other sort of combustion which is flaming combustion which we saw in the pandanus going up, beautiful example of flaming combustion. Here the flames are sort of basically resident and looking at the wood of course it's just smouldering and it's two different forms of combustion and they do, uh, each produces a slightly different sort of um, chemistry of smoke. Flaming combustion is far more oxygenated, so the chemical species that are produced are essentially more oxidised, uh, the more oxidised forms, um, whereas in the smouldering combustion you, you tend to get the more reduced forms. So, uh, for example, more carbon monoxide and more methane comes uh, pound for pound out of smouldering combustion than flaming combustion. And uh, understanding the combustion process and the different ways in which fuel types ignite and combust, very important for understanding fire and greenhouse gas relationships. <laughs>